Sailor Moon, The Power of Love, Chapter 1, Laid Up Soft white bubbles floated from left to right, then back again. Warm water lapped up and down the ceramic tile, the bubbles flowing over the edge of the tub. Ah, <sighs> Serena Tsukino sighed, completely relaxed. There is nothing like a bubble bath after a long, hard Sunday, Serena thought. Of course, her entire day had consisted of three naps, three complete meals plus three major snacks, a good hour or two of PlayStation, and a bit of chatting on the net. Still, how good it felt to kick back in a luxurious bath of eucalyptus, peppermint, and Siberian pine bath crystals. Luna, you don't know what you're missing, Serena yelled out, teasing. Like any cat, Luna stayed as far from the water as she could. Serena could see Luna stretching her little back body in the bedroom, Approaching the doorway to the bathroom, Luna sat down and stared at Serena. If you keep soaking your body for so long like that, you're going to end up looking like a prune, little Luna scolded. Serena stuck her tongue out at Luna, although she couldn't cover up a big smile. Sometimes it just cracked her up to see Luna, this little black cat, talking like a person. Sure, Luna wasn't an average cat, and since Serena had first met Luna, her experiences finding evil as Sailor Moon had gave her a new perspective. Even so, it was so cute to see this little furry feline chattering away. You're just a big baby scared of the water and all, Serena flicked a few drops towards Luna, who was promptly jumped back to dodge getting wet. Getting out of the tub, Serena threw a towel over her soaking wet body. As she walked over to the mirror, the sound of the water dripping onto the tub echoed through the bathroom. Ah! Serena screamed at the top of her lungs. Luna dashed into the bathroom, and Serena's entire family ran to the bedroom, worried. Clutching her towel, Serena turned towards Luna, her eyes bloodshot red. Luna? Serena struggled with tears as she caught her breath from the shock. I'm getting fat! Luna stopped dead in her tracks. That's it. What do you mean, that's it? Serena cried, desperate in a panic. This is a major deal! Serena's parents came rushing into the room with her little brother, Sammy. Serena, you're going to give Mom and Dad a heart attack! Sammy yelled, seeing Serena was perfectly fine. What's wrong, honey? Kind as always, Serena's dad looked concerned. Daddy! Serena begged for some sympathy. Look how fat I'm getting! Honey, being fat isn't a bad thing, her dad responded. That was not quite the sympathy Serena was hoping for. Daddy, how can I become popular and, Serena paused, get boys to like me if I'm fat? Serena felt a little guilty about ragging so hard on being fat. After all, some girls were fat, but still popular, funny, and had lots of friends. So it wasn't being fat that was a bad thing. It was Serena being fat that was a bad thing. Being fat just wouldn't look right on her, Serena reasoned. That's what you get for pigging out all the time. Sammy stuck his thumb in his ears and waved his hands back and forth, teasing Serena. Shut up, you jerk! Serena snapped at him. Sammy has a point. This time it was Serena's mother. After all, you don't exercise and you eat between meals, not to mention the fact that you never do your homework. Mom, what does not doing my homework have to do with getting fat? See, you don't even realize, do you? Serena's mom scolded. If you were doing your homework like you should every day, you wouldn't be spending so much time in the kitchen raiding the refrigerator. That was it, Serena decided. She wasn't going to put up with this any longer. It was time she was doing something about her weight problem so no one could tease her anymore. That meant only one thing, spelled with four little letters. D-I-E-T. Serena would show everyone. At school the following day, Serena barely made it to fourth period. Feeling weak, she put her head on her desk and prayed for class to end. Having skipped breakfast and her usual snack at recess, Serena's stomach was rumbling like thunder. The bell rang and everyone stormed out of the classroom for lunch. Only Serena did not budge. Come on, Serena! Molly Brown noticed her blonde friend slumped over in her seat. Are you feeling sick? Serena stared at Molly's moving lips. Her energy level was too low to even respond. Serena, what's wrong with you? Molly, Serena struggled to get up, but somehow able to lift her body from the desk. I need food. Serena, it's lunchtime, Molly said reassuringly. 
If it's food you want, there's no need to stress. Let's go. Molly, you don't understand. Serena struggled up and made her way outside with Molly at her side. I can't eat. If I don't starve myself, I'll never lose weight. You. <laughs> On a diet. Molly had to hold her side from laughing so hard. What's so funny? Serena protested. Serena, you're the grub queen, Molly said, shaking her head. You want a diet is just wrong. Serena could hear Molly's words, but nothing was computing in her brain. All she could do was hone in on all the food being eaten all around her. Joe Pistone was in the corner with his buddies, Bill and Zach, all three of them munching on Burger King takeout. Jill and Tina and June were in the middle of the courtyard eating homemade sandwiches. Just then, Serena started to smell the most delicious aroma in the world. Hey, Serena, the voice called out from behind her. Serena spun around to see Melvin holding a plate of sushi up to her face. Here, have some. Melvin offered her the entire plate of succulent California rolls. I bought way too much just for me. Serena felt her jaw drop down to the floor. Her saliva started drooling out of the corner of her mouth. She could not take her eyes off the gleaming white rice and shredded crab. Sushi was her favorite. Sure, it was one of the most expensive meals around, but that only made it more romantic. Her dream date was a fashionable, charming stud taking her to the most intimate sushi bar in town. Serena, don't do it! Kim Matthews was yelling for Serena to stop while shaking her by the shoulders. Molly just told me you're starving yourself to lose weight. You've got to stop. I went through an anorexic period last nut year, and it almost killed me. Kim's right, Serena, Molly agreed. There's much healthier ways to lose weight. Really? Serena was easily convinced. Snatching the plate of sushi up from Melvin's outstretched arms, Serena started gobbling down the fancy fish treats. With her mouth full of rice, Serena looked over at Molly. What other ways? First of all, they say exercise is key, Molly explained. It's true, Kim chimed in. A properly balanced diet with regular exercise is the best way to lose weight. Wishing Serena luck, Kim excused herself since she had to meet her other, another friend in the library. The girls waved goodbye to Kim and carried on their conversation. Actually, have you noticed Miss Haruna? Molly asked, referring to their homeroom teacher, Patricia Haruna. She's been on a new health kick and lost like 15 pounds in less than a week. Really? Serena asked, surprised. I did notice. Look here, Melvin pulled out two Polaroid photos of Miss Haruna. The one on the left here is Miss Haruna when she first joined the new club. The one on the right is what she looked like four days after joining. Amazing, isn't it? Serena could not believe it. How could Miss Haruna lose so much weight in less than a week? Was it some special diet that a new club had her on? Or was it just because she was exercising? Either way, Serena had to join this club. If starving yourself was not the answer... This club was the key to losing weight. Melvin, did you take these photos? Serena asked, hoping to find out the club's location. Yeah, Melvin, Molly joined in. What are you doing taking photos of Miss Haruna in her aerobics outfit? Serena sensed Molly's accusatory tone and knew Molly was ready for a classic nerd roasting session. Don't you know it's a crime invading privacy? Molly started to turn up the heat. And just think, Serena couldn't help it. She's your teacher. You probably get suspended if Don and the Dreaded knew. Everyone at Crosscodes called their principal Don and the Dreaded because Principal Donnan was so mean. Come on, you guys, Melvin pleaded. It wasn't like that. The school's biggest geek started to back away from the tormenting girls. Let us have the photos, Molly insisted, closing in on him. Hand them here, Melvin. Serena moved on to the left with Molly on the right. Please, Melvin begged. Leave me alone. Ducking in between Serena and Molly, Melvin dodged the girls and ran past the courtyard. The girls wasted no, no the girls wasted no time in pursuit. Get back here, you little dweeb Serena called while Molly giggled. Little Melvin proved no match for the girls, and his lack of athletic ability left him collapse on the ground near the gym. Panting, Melvin looked up in protest. Okay, you can have the photos, Melvin cried. But please don't hand me over to Don and the Dreaded. Molly snatched up the photos. And Serena leaned down next to Melvin's face, so close she could easily touch Melvin's nose. Pointing her index finger right in front of Melvin's eyes, Serena played the part of the ruthless private investigator. It's time for you to cough up some info, loser, 
Serena phoned an Italian accent. Where's this so-called club where you shot your peepin' Tom photos? Trapped, Melvin had no choice but to spill the beans. Melvin told the girls how he followed Miss Haruna after school and watched her go into a fitness club called Shape Salon. With a contented smile on her face, Serena turned to Molly and continued her Italian undercover routine. Molly, baby, forget about this loser. Serena's voice was a husky Pacino. It's time for the rendezvous at the Shape Salon. Chapter 2. Shape Salon After school, Kim, Serena, Molly, and Lisa Brownridge gathered outside the three-story round building made with sheer glass windows. From the street, the girls could see rows of fitness equipment. The glass was mainly reflective, so the equipment was barely visible. But it seemed like the club was crowded with people working out. Well, let's give it a shot, said Kim, looking over at her friends. It can't be worse than not eating. Serena shrugged at the Serena shuddered at the memory of that morning, and the girls entered the lobby. On a huge video screen hanging in from the ceiling in the lobby, a beautiful model clutched a towel and smiled. Girls, welcome to the Shape Salon. The model's voice blared out of the video screen as if if someone knew the four girls had just walked in. Hey, look, you guys, Molly squealed excited. It's Pamela O. Sanderson from Baywatch. She's talking to us. In just one day, the model explained, you can lose two pounds. In two days, you can lose eight pounds. And after three days, you can look gorgeous like me. Guys, I bet this place is totally pricey, Lisa commented, worried. Yeah, but no price is too high to become drop-dead gorgeous, Serena reasoned. I've spent too much money on clothes lately, though, Lisa explained. Good point, the other girls agreed. Best of all, the model continued, this month's special campaign means you can join for a free trial. There's no excuse not to become drop-dead gorgeous. It's like Pamela O is reading our minds, Molly said. Yeah, it's a no-brainer now, Serena agreed. Where do we sign up? The girls wandered over to the reception desk and rang the bell. Out came a tall, blonde instructor with tan skin and a very defined muscles. Gaga over the stud muffin, Serena and her friends tried hard to contain themselves. This was what losing weight was all about, Serena thought. She starts shedding pounds like a snake sheds its skin. You're here for the tree free trial, right? The blonde instructor showed teeth so white it sparkled. Hi, my name is Jed. Pleasure to meet you. Hi, Jed, the girls were strided, swooning. Come with me, and I'll give you a special VIP tour. Wow, he's treating us like VIPs, Molly whispered to Serena, giggling. Maybe all the instructors look like him, Kim added hopefully. Jed, with his totally cut body, showed off a brand new exercise bikes, rowing machines, stair climbers, and a bizarre combo machines only found in late night infomercials. In the back were pools, lockers, changing rooms, and a full on steam room and jacuzzi set. Besides the machines, there were racquetball courts, aerobic studio, a juice bar, and a relaxation room with yoga and meditation classes. This place is amazing commented Lisa, visibly impressed. Girls, I can tell some of you are the elite in Crossroads, Jad cooed. The space salon features the most modern fitness equipment available today. I know we'll be able to satisfy your discriminating tastes. However, I must warn you about one thing. The girls looked at Jed's tanned body and wondered what he was about to say. Losing weight is something you must be completely committed to. Jed warned. Not only do I want to see you here every day, I want you to give yourself completely to the process. Capiche? Capiche, everyone except Serena yelled, nodding earnestly. When they noticed Serena looked puzzled, they turned around to face her. Serena looked around. Ah, she said, her face reddening. Isn't Capiche the little Italian restaurant over at the Crossroads Mall? Molly, Lisa, and Kim exchanged glasses, glances and started bursting up. Serena! Capiche means got it in Italian, Molly explained in between laughs. The blonde god Jed just shook his head in disgust while Serena slinked back, embarrassed. 
After changing into their workout clothes, the four girls walked out into the main exercise room and looked around at the sophisticated fitness apparatus. Good thing I brought my Dolce & Cabana Lycra fitness clothes with me, Molly said with a sense of relief. You're always so prepared. Serena was amazed. Molly always seemed to know what to do. The girls split up and headed towards different areas of the workout room. While Kim and Lisa hopped on their exercise bikes, Molly gave the rowing machine a shot. Serena walked over to the stair climbing machine and expected it. She had seen stair climbing machines on TV before, but how in the world did they work? Serena stepped on one of the stairs carefully and stood up. Suddenly, the stairs started dropping down, and Serena completely lost her balance. Help! she yelled as she fell off the stair climbers onto the ground. This thing is dangerous! Serena was really worried about messing up her clothes. She didn't have the beautiful Dolce & Cabana that Molly was wearing, but her CK outfit certainly wasn't worth ruining. Do you need some help there, honey? Serena looked up and saw Jed offering his hand to help her up. She blushed and took it. Thanks. I'm not really used to exercising. That's okay, said Jed reassuringly. I'll help you out. Just step on the bottom stair here, and when you're balanced, step on the top and keep repeating the pattern like you're walking upstairs. Serena followed the blonde hunk's instruction to a T and was soon climbing the stairs like a fireman in a burning office building. What a stupid exercise, Serena thought. After all, if she needed to go up, she would just take the elevator the point of climbing all these stairs and stepping off exactly where she started. After what seemed like four hours, Serena's body would not budge. She pressed the stop button and carefully exited the nasty machine. Looking at her watch, Serena realized she'd only been stair climbing for five minutes. Losing weight was really a pain. After all that work, even though it was only five minutes, Serena decided to reward herself with a dip in the jacuzzi. Throwing her exercise clothes into the locker, Serena headed towards the ladies-only steam room. In the main exercise room, Molly was taking a break from the rowing machine when the blonde instructor Jed strolled by. Hey, you, Jed snarled at Molly. You can't afford to take a rest. Don't you want to become drop-dread gorgeous? After all, you're pretty cute, so if you try hard enough, I know you can do it. Molly turned crimson red. Do you really think so? I know it, Jed reassured her, resting his muscle-laden arm on Molly's shoulder. You're right, Molly planted herself on the rowing machine again. I can't give up until I'm drop-dead gorgeous. Good girl. Jed walked away, smiling to himself. After about a half hour of intense exercise, Molly's face turned completely pale, and she leaned off the rowing machine and literally dropped to the floor. Kim and Lisa stumbled up to her, both of their faces the same pale shade, and collapsed on the floor next to Molly. Jed came strolling up to the exhausted girls. You all worked hard today, so I have a special treat for you. The three girls looked up at Jed, weak but interested. Usually this costs extra, but since this is our special campaign week, and you worked so hard today, there's no charge. Jed led the three lifeless girls by the hand to the tanning cell beds. These are our special shape sun salon. These aren't just regular tanning beds. The UV rays are treated to remove the extra lipids in your body so that you can go home even thinner. Molly looked at Kim and Lisa with excited expression on her face. This is what Miss Haruna must have used to lose so much weight in less than a week. These little pod capsules look kind of freaky to me, but if they'll help me lose a few extra pounds, I'm in. Lisa headed over to the black head tanning beds. Wait up, Lisa, called Kim. I want to try, too. Me, too, Molly ran behind the other two, limping but determined to shred a few more pounds. The blonde instructor watched the three girls under the capsule and muttered to himself, That's right, girls. Just let the rays sap up the rest of your energy. Jed chuckled under his breath. When Molly, Lisa, and Kim finished their shape sun spawn session, their faces were paler than Casper the ghost. Girls, you look so beautiful, Com Jed complimented them. It's amazing. Cool, the three girls high-fived each other, even though their bodies seemed ready to collapse. Remember, if you want to become drop-dead gorgeous, make sure you come here every day, Jed reminded them. Okay, the girls nodded and headed off towards the showers. 
Thousands of miles from the shaped salon, pitch black columns shaped like bones reflected only the glow of fireflies. Amongst the crawling worms and scrambling rats, Queen Beryl rubbed her black crystal ball. The image of Safe Salon and his blonde, studly instructor came into view. Jedite, report in at once. Queen Beryl's booming voice echoed through the dark chamber. Queen Beryl, you will be pleased to hear that my strategy is working perfectly. Excellent. The stupid girls here want to look beautiful so badly they'll do anything to lose weight, Jedi explained. My machines are sapping up all their energy. Perfect, Queen Beryl hissed. Continue with your plan. As you wish, your majesty. As Jedi bowed, his eyes flickered to the same glow as the fireflies. Chapter 3. Nuts for Donuts Finished drying off her body outside the jacuzzi, Serena changed into her DKNY casual jeans and baby tee. Glancing around, she couldn't find Molly, Lisa, or Kim anywhere. Confused, Serena approached the picture-perfect beefsteak instructor. Uh, Jed? Serena's innocent baby blue eyes were slightly red from the jacuzzi. Have you seen my friends? Oh, you mean those three girls? They left about ten minutes ago. They left without Serena? What were they thinking? Even though they tended to be a bit selfish at times, Serena found them leaving without saying anything to her a bit unusual. Jed looked over at Serena with a twinkle in his eye. How about trying the relaxing shape sun salon bed? (laughs) <laughs> no, thanks, Serena muttered, shaking her head. I've really got to head out. Well, make sure you come back tomorrow, sweetie, Jed flashed another pearly white smile. You look great in your workout clothes. Flushing, Serena ducked out and began walking home. All that sweating, she thought. Really, all the gym ended up doing was making her hungrier. How could anyone lose weight if they just ate more food after their workout? Crossing the street, Serena glanced to her right. Coming down the sidewalk was a little boy about four years old. His mother was strolling about 15 feet behind him, window shopping. The boy's hands were covered in red goo, dripping down between his fingers. His hands grasped a white, creamy donut with red goo dripping out from the bottom. Stuffing the donut in his mouth, the boy cackled an excited laugh as he gobbled the donut up up, bite by bite. Serena's eyes started to bulge from her head. Stopped dead in her tracks, Serena stared at the boy walking right towards her. With saliva beginning to dribble down her chin, Serena stood in front of the boy. Don't not. Serena's voice sounded desperate. Don't not. The tone raised and the boy looked up, finally noticing her. Serena towered over the boy, staring at his donut with zombie eyes and canine salivation. The boy started backing up, his eyes full of fright. Mommy! The boy's mother was still a few shops back. Mommy! The boy yelled out, spinning around and running towards his mother. Serena felt pretty guilty. After all, harassing toddlers was a bit extreme. Still, the pang in her empty gut wouldn't stop. That donut looked so scrumptious. Without food, she just might pass out. Stumbling over to the Crown Arcade, Serena barely made it through the automatic sliding doors inside. Weak from hunger, Serena suddenly felt faint. Dropping her Prada bag, she began falling backwards. Too weak herself from falling, she closed her eyes and braced for a smash into the floor. Instead, she felt soft arm catch her and hold her up. Opening her eyes, she saw an attractive male face. It was Andrew Foreman, the part-time guy at Crown. Serena? Andrew's face showed worry on the verge of panic. What's wrong? Do you feel sick? Do you want me to take you to the hospital? Hospital? Serena looked up at Andrew. Can you take me to a nice restaurant? A restaurant? Andrew looked perplexed. Why would that help? Because I haven't had anything to eat all day and I worked out, Serena whined. Thank you, Andrew, for saving me. Without, Serena fainted out again. Serena, snap out of it! She could barely hear Andrew's words as he slipped into dream mode. Andrew, baby, Serena whispered, deeply content in her daydream. Serena, I know how to make you feel better. Andrew stroked her hair while talking to her in his deep, husky voice. If you just feel the power of my love for you, your energy will flow right back into your body. Serena smiled at the handsome face in front of her. 
Oh, Andrew, that's so romantic. Her dream fading away, Serena felt hot chicken broth on her lips. Opening her eyes, she could see Andrew's concerned face with his hands holding a cup of instant soup in, up to her mouth. Serena, I'm glad to see you conscious again, Andrew said relieved. You had me worried. Here, drink the rest of this soup. Andrew, you're so sweet, Serena smiled, thinking of the dream she had a second before. I feel so much better now. So why haven't you eaten anything today, Andrew said. Andrew looked at her curious. Well, Serena began, slightly embarrassed. I just started this diet. Andrew started cracking up at the mention of diet. Serena stared at him, shocked. What's so funny about that? Serena's face had turned bright red. It's just... Andrew tried to contain his laughs. It's just that you're so skinny. If you start a diet, you'll end up skin, as bo skin and bones. You're just saying that. No, no, Andrew insisted. If anything, you need to gain a few pounds. I prefer girls girl with some meat on their, uh, over those anorexic-looking types. Serena was definitely pleased to finally hear someone telling her she was too skinny. With that kind of encouragement, Serena easily recovered and headed over to the donut shop to pick up a bag of fresh jelly filled. With a mouthful of raspberry-flavored jelly, humming herself... Humming as she walked down the street, Serena could not have been happier. Blondie, is that jelly-covered t-shirt the new junior high look nowadays? Serena turned to confront the sarcastic male voice. To her disgust, it was the same tall, dark-haired, oakley-shaded guy with the sky-high ego problem. It's my new look, okay? Serena pouted. Anyway, it's none of your business what's on my t-shirt. Well, if you keep picking out on donuts like that, you might end up looking like one. That did it. Who did this guy think he was? After all, Serena didn't even know him. Someone needed to stick a print in, pin in that overinflated ego of his. Serena reached into her bag of donuts and grabbed one. Hurling it with all her might at the guy, she shouted, Here's one for you, jerk! The guy lifted his Oakleys up just a bit with his right hand, and with his left, he easily grabbed the donut in midair. Chomping on the fresh jelly filled, he looked over at Serena, grinning. Blueberry, my favorite kind. This is 400 calories that won't go straight to your thighs, the guy commented, adding insult to injury. With that, he disappeared around the corner. What a real jerk, Serena thought, completely frustrated. Luna looked up at Serena, snickering. With just one donut, you can easily gain two pounds, Luna started to tease Serena. With two donuts, you can gain eight pounds, and with three donuts, you can look just like a donut. Ha, 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 Serena rolled her eyes. Luna, to show you how much you know, and who actually likes chubby girls, so there. No, Serena, Luna countered. He said he likes girls with some meat on her. That's quite different from chubby. My God, Serena thought. Luna was right. Maybe she shouldn't have eaten so many donuts. How many did she eat? By the way, Serena, we have a serious situation going on, Luna said. Tell me about it, Luna, Serena cried. I ate more than six donuts. That's definitely a serious situation. Look, Luna interjected. Miss Serena looks like a twig. So do all the girls working out at the shape salon. We've got to get back there and check it out. Shape Salon, that's it. Serena was on a totally different plane. I've got to go back to Shape Salon and lose some weight once and for all. Without even thinking about Luna or her words, Serena dashed off towards Shape Salon. This time she was really determined to get in some exercise. Chapter 4, Killer Workout Serena ran through the glitzy entrance to Shape Salon, flashing her ID card on the way in. Without slowing down, she headed straight for the lockers and quickly changed into her workout clothes. Almost knocking down two girls on the way out of the locker room, Serena hurried over to the exercise bikes and hopped on one. Hey there, a muscle-clad instructor came up to Serena and flashed a smile. Serena was too busy pumping away at the bike to even notice the instructor. Her arms were locked in front of her, clutching the bike handles, and her head was down, watching her feet push the pedals over and over faster than the speed of light. You know, you should really pace yourself a bit more, the instructor warned. 
The most effective workout is a series of repetitions over a long period of time. That way, your endurance is built. If you knock yourself all at once, you'll just overexert yourself and run out of energy. Serena looked over the instructor, furiously pedaling along. I can't help it. Serena was working so hard she could barely spit out the words. I've got to work off those donuts. Serena actually sped up her pedaling to the point where she looked like a crazed Tour de France bicyclist. Everyone in the exercise room momentarily stopped their workouts to st and stared at Serena's hypercycling. Mouth agape, even the instructor backed away from Miss Serena, leaving her on her own. Serena didn't care. This time, I've got to get in a good workout. There's no way I'm going to let that jerk and Luna convince me that I'm fat. I'll prove it to them. I'll prove it to everyone. Pedaling as fast as she could, Serena tried to keep herself going without feeling the pain. I'm going downhill. Serena mumbled to herself. This is easy. There's no pain at all. No pain. I'm going downhill. Serena kept trying to psych herself out to of feeling the pain that was working its way into her legs. Out of the corner of her eye, she noticed Luna outside the window. Luna was looking at Serenity, making a disgusted face. This really annoyed Serena, who kept cycling as fast as she could. Luna was being so uncool. They used to have so much fun hanging out together, but now Luna was acting like everything Serena did was wrong. Don't eat this. Don't eat that. Don't play video games. Don't sleep in. Don't go shopping. Was her mother paying Luna off or what? Serenity noticed Luna was glancing towards the another part of the club, distracted. Luna's eyes started to open wide as she jumped, dashing away from the window at top speed. Shaking her head, Serena went back to pumping the pedals on the bike. Little by little, she started to run out of power. First, she felt the pain creep in her side. Her side? Out of all places, why does she hurt there? Pain is a weird thing. Serena did her best to ignore it, but she couldn't keep cycling. Pausing for a moment to try to catch her breath, Serena stared at the pedals, sitting on the bike, panting. Just then, Luna darted into the room like a black comet. Heading right for Serena, Luna let out a long and furious meow. Serena couldn't believe her eyes as Luna dove for the exercise bike, hitting Serena like a torpedo and knocking her off the bike. That did it. Serena had no idea what had gotten into Luna, but there was no excuse for this. Maybe Serena did eat too much. Maybe she did play too many video games. Maybe she didn't complete her homework on time. But Serena was fed up with Luna's rude attitude. After knocking Serena off the bike, Luna looked right at her and meowed. In front of the people, Serena knew Luna wouldn't let anyone know she could talk. After meowing one more time, Luna stuck her tongue out of Serena and dashed towards the door of the gym. Oh, that cat, Serena thought. Wait until she got her hands on that black fur ball. She'd squeeze Luna until her face turned blue, Serena was so mad. Running outside to chase down Luna, Serena stormed out of the shaped salon glitzy entrance. Flatting Luna down the street on the left, Serena ran after her. Luna dashed into a park and stopped on the grass near some trees. When Serena finally caught up, she noticed that there was no one else around. What were you thinking knocking me over the bike? Serena was livid. After exercising like that, I was in a state of semi-consciousness. That could have been the end of me. Serena, you don't understand. We have a major problem. Luna spoke calmly yet firmly. For once, you've got to stop thinking about yourself and listen to me. Miss Haruna is going to die. The words went right through Serena. Between not eating almost anything but donuts, exercising like a bionic woman, and being in the state of fury, Serena couldn't think straight. You know who's going to die? Serena went on, hands on hips. You, Luna, once I get my hands on you, I am going to kill you. Serena dove for Luna, who dodged out of the way at the last minute. Of course, Serena couldn't, wouldn't really kill Luna, but she was fed up and wanted to teach her a lesson. Before Serena could turn around, Luna jumped into Serenity from behind, knocking her down again. This time, before Serena could even move, Luna pinned her arms down and hissed. That's it, Serena, Luna snapped her eyes with on fire. Serena started to shake with fear. I've had it with you. You've got to transform into Sailor Moon and get back to that shape salon. The enemy is running that place. I saw the blonde instructor Jed from the window carrying Miss Aruna's body. He just dumped her on the other room, laughing the whole way. Before it's too late, you've got to turn into Sailor Moon and go save those poor girls. Don't you understand? Serena couldn't believe she was hearing. How could this be true? 
She was in the straight salon, even talking to Jed and the other instructors. They were perfectly nice. More importantly, they were major hotties. Well, Serena knew she had been acting pretty lame lately. It must have been all those donuts. Or maybe that jerk she bumped in who threw a don't she threw the donut at. No matter what, she had to believe Luna. Moon prism power make up. Serena instinctively lifted her arms in the air and she spun around. With a flash of light, Serena was no longer in her funky CK workout clothes. Instead, she sported a shiny sailor-style bodysuit with long white gloves, a red bow, a sparkling tiara, and red boots. This was her Sailor Moon uniform. Move over, Batman. Okay, Luna, let's go. This was only the fourth time Serena had ever transformed into Sailor Moon to battle evil. Though it was really a pain in the butt, she was starting to get used to it. After all, someone had to fight evil, even though it would have been nice if it didn't have to be her. Serena didn't waste any time storming back into the shape salon and looking for the blonde instructor, Jed. Serena, they got Haruna downstairs. Luna dashed left and headed down the hidden staircase. Serena quickly followed, and they burst open the closed door. The blonde instructor looked up to see Serenity ready to fight. You. I knew you showed up eventually. This time, I, Jedi, won't let you win. Serena saw the good-looking instructor, Jed, was really the same enemy, Jedi, whom she encountered in her last battle. She remembered how she was fooled by his radio DJ disguise, Jadeite. For some reason, he always looked like such a stud. How could she be attracted to a bad guy? Except now she was totally unattractive, since evil really wasn't what she looked for in a guy. So you remember me, Serena remarked. Just in case, I'll remind you again. I am Sailor Moon, champion of love and justice, and on behalf of the moon, you're punished. That's exactly what you said last time, Jedi scowled. Can't you be more original? Hey, look who's talking, Mr. Creative. Serena snapped back. Last time your disguise name was Jedite instead of your normal bad guy name of Jedite. This time it's Jed instead of Jedi. What are you going to choose next time? Jed height? Jedite's face started to flush red. That's easy for you to say, but it worked on you. He did have a point, Serena thought. Yeah, but not for too long. See, I figured you out. Luna looked up at Serena and stuck her tongue out. Okay, so maybe it was Luna who figured it out, but Jedi didn't need to know that. Jedi called over the string instructor assistants. Get her, he barked. Each of the three assistants looked like they were cover models for Muscle and Fitness magazine. With biceps larger than Luna, the three instructors surrounded Serena. Uh, oh, Serena gulped. The three instructors had her cornered and came in to attack. Why did Serena always get herself surrounded like this? Looking up at the three muscle men, Serena started to sniffle. Destroy her for good, Jedi ordered. With an evil smile on his face, Jedi disappeared into the darkness. One instructor picked up a weight and hurled it towards Serena. Ah! Serena dodged it at the last minute, and the weight came crashing down to the floor, crack cracking the wood. Luna, help! Sailor Moon, see those rings over their heads? Luna pointed to the instructors. Sure enough, they were glowing rings almost hidden over the three instructors' heads. Those rings are controlling their actions. If you break the rings with your tiara, they'll turn back into regular men. You mean regular beefcake, right? Serena smiled, enjoying the thought. One of the instructors picked up another weight and hurled it at her again. Serena dodged it, but this time the last instructor grabbed her. Luna, they've got me! Serena cried. Fight, Sailor Moon! What can I do? Serena began to panic. This jerk's got me in a lock and I can't move. Sailor Moon, just fight hard. If you do, you might actually lose some weight, Luna said sarcastically. Lose weight? Just the thought of actually shedding a few pounds gave her inspiration. With a kick to the instructor's groin, Serena broke free of his hold. That's it! Now use your tiara! Luna yelled. Moon tiara action! Serena wasted no time flinging her frisbee-like tiara over the instructor's. Like a boomerang, the tiara nailed the three rings and flew back into Serena's hands. Not bad, Serena thought. The instructors looked around, dazed and confused. Luna, do you think I lost a few pounds? Serena's hopes were high. Back at home, Serena soaked in her hot bath. This time, she really deserved the relaxation of eucalyptus peppermint and Siberian pine bath crystals. Luna, I'm so glad we were able to get Miss Haruna to the hospital in time for her to recover. Serena said. 
It's true, Luna agreed. Another hour or two, and she wouldn't have been able to make had enough nutrition left in her to make it. You did well, Serena. Please, Serena got out of the tub and headed over to the sink. Casually stepping on the round, white digital scale in front of the sink, Serena weighed herself. Ah! Serena's face turned pale. From the other room, Luna called out, Serena, what happened? Luna, Luna! Serena started to panic. After all that exercise, I actually gained a pound. Luna couldn't help bursting out laughing while Serena chased the little black fur ball around the room.